We see ourselves as a utility. We're not just a place where you get one kind of information like business. It's movie reviews and consumer hints and household advice. We also provide communications, electronic mail, chat from coast to coast. It gives you computing power and games. It's a diverse database that lets you do a little bit of almost everything. It's a lot of fun. When most people think of the source, I think that they think of a big mother computer in the sky somewhere that is a repository for all of the world's information that's very friendly to use, that they can address in plain English and get responses in plain English. In reality, the source is six prime 750 computers here in McLean, Virginia, which provide a vast amount of information that they gather from other computers around the country, put into a standardized form, and make available to the general public. The source is really two networks in one. We use a local network that ties the computers together through a high-speed link that transfers voluminous amounts of information at one time. We also augment that local network with services we purchase both here and in Canada. That allows us to bring in calls from anywhere in the world directly into the source. Through multiplexing or through combining large numbers of calls, we can transfer these calls very economically. In the case of a long distance call, you are using a single device and a single transmission media to make a voice call. In the case of a data call, you're using, again, a single device, but your call is being combined and assigned a particular type of ID along with numbers of other calls at the origination point. Then at the point of destination, that call is being redeciphered by using that ID and forwarded to the proper user. That's the whole multiplexing technique, assigning an ID at the point of origin and using that ID at the point of destination to break that call apart from the other calls it's being transmitted with. By using statistical accounting methods, we've determined that all of our users will not call at any given time. So therefore, we've configured our lines to support the upper end of that statistical average. Signing on, I think, is the, the biggest problem that we have. Some people leave out spaces and we ask for a distinct format in signing on to the system. Other people have trouble in connecting to the network. A lot of times they might type in the wrong password. Some people don't know what their passwords are. Some people don't know what their account number is, so we try to explain that because that's one of the things that they'll be using continuously through their subscription. They can call this department 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Surprisingly, the typical subscriber to the source is not a person in the data processing or computer field. They are people who are business professionals, business owners, physicians, lawyers, there are many people from the media, writers, publishers on the system. And the one thing that they all share is a, an overriding interest in personal computing. All of them are involved trying to apply the phenomenon of personal computing to their own fields. A very large proportion of our source subscribers are educational users. And they find the ability to look up information electronically and then to move that information from our main computers into smaller microcomputers provides a very valuable tool for performing research and student demonstrations. Educators are using the source to teach their students that computers aren't the ogres that, they're, that they seem to be to the first user, that they're pretty easy and that they're pretty friendly and that you really can't blow things up by making the wrong command. We believe the source itself is an educational experience. It teaches you how to communicate, how to compute, how do you exercise databases via the telephone? The source teaches people about the potentials of personal computing in a very straightforward, easy to understand way. 
you can learn modern languages through the source, and do vocabulary tests and things like that. There are mathematical programs. We provide each of our subscribers with a pretty substantial user's manual. Easy to follow instructions prepared under the guidance of our parent company, the Reader's Digest, which is known for its consumer orientation. People will call the source and via the telephone will download onto their microcomputer a computer-assisted instructional program, which then they will sign off so they no longer have to pay connect time rates. And then they will bring the disk up on their own microcomputer and go through whatever the educational material might be. We're constantly striving for increased simplicity and increased ease of use. We're always looking for better and faster ways to bring you the information that relates as specifically as possible to your needs. And that's part of the wonder of computers. It's part of the potential of it that we need to use more ourselves. And we're just learning along with everybody else. Thank you.